So uh, we are Rothschild, um, a UK-based band. Uh, we just released an EP called Broken Man. And um, yeah, we do, we're doing an interview today with Heavy Rock Radio. So uh, very excited. <laughs> Beautiful, guys. Thanks for joining us. Good to put a, a face to the names. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So firstly, for those unfamiliar with Rothschild, which I'm sure there are a few on this side of the world, give us a bit of a history on the band. Um, so, yeah, it started around four years ago, um, I, I, just because we just wanted to start gigging and, um, you know, and playing shows and writing music again, um, because we hadn't done it for a few years. And yeah, we, you know, we uh, have a, had a few lineup changes, everything like that, but now we've kind of finally got one settled and we finally released an EP. And we just kind of wanted to combine all the sort of genres we love in heavy music and everything like that and um and see if people like it and hopefully people do and and yeah now we're finally getting moving with everything obviously we recorded the ep uh oh god like two years ago now but obviously covid happened Pretty everything like that there. so uh yeah so everything everything happened with covid and now uh we're finally releasing it finally moving forward so yeah it's uh it's all go at the minute Excellent. And as you mentioned, you released your debut EP last month. So how's the early reception been for it? Yeah, people seem to really be enjoying it so far. I think your review is probably our favourite. <laughs> <so far, laughs> um, yeah, I think I think it's uh, I think it's gone down. I think when we when we put the single out, I think was that uh, a couple of months before, um, that got a lot more traction than I thought than we thought it was going to get. Um, really, so yeah, we we're pr pretty pleasantly surprised by the whole reception to everything so far. So being, good. being your debut EP, what, what sorts of things did you focus on going into it? Oh, God, I think, uh, well, to be honest, a lot of the time it was just me and Danny, um, you know, uh, writing it. And uh, a lot of, the, most of the ideas were just, we just want something fun live. It was a bit of a different experience. It wasn't like, um, just, let's just focus primarily on what's best for the songs. We'd come out of a band, we hadn't been playing for two years, and we just thought, you know what, really sick of not playing and everything like that. So we just kind of wanted something energetic at first, just just to be able to play. Um, so that was the idea of going into to the writing process. Obviously, then things evolved, but at first it was just, let's just get something energetic and, and just fun that we can play and hopefully people can have a jump around to. That was basically it. Uh, and then obviously things evolve into, well, actually, maybe we should have a chorus. That might help. And then <laughs> Yeah, it was quite <laughs> self-indulgent, wasn't it, the writing process yeah. for it? We sort of threw, threw exactly. the, uh, yeah, it was um, interesting to sort of see what we could write if we didn't sort of put constrictions on ourselves so much, you know. Um, like yeah, and to, be, and to be honest. We, we sort of went into it thinking with some sort of, to make it commercially viable in some way. And I think with this, with Rothschild, we've sort of gone into it the opposite way and just gone, oh, what, what do we like? What would be fun for us to play? And then shifted that into an actual song at some point down the line. <laughs> yeah, so, and to be honest, at first we couldn't even play the track. So, so that was a big thing. <laughs> yeah, we could actually, it took a while to get that down. Yeah, to be honest, it was, it was probably a good idea that we took so long to release it because at first, the whole idea was let's just really just push ourselves and just do stuff that, you know, that we like, but also we, we couldn't even play it at first. We were just like, let's just go balls to the wall with it all. So that was the that was the idea, really. <laughs> it, like, loosely put, like, your music combines alternative rock, math rock, metal, there's emo, there's post-hardcore, there's a lot of things in there, but how, how did you know, like, in the writing process, how did you know when you got the balance right, you know, like, how did you know when you'd gone too far, maybe? I think there's a, a calculated risk to to that sort of aspect of it where we thought, well, we could we could put a, like a breakdown in here. It might not like work at all. And then I think after a while, once we started sort of playing them live before we recorded and we sort of worked out 
you know what people were responding to in the audience and things like that um so yeah i guess it you know it was sort of there's always a risk uh putting an ep together that's got so many weird different sort of structural elements and things like that but yeah, I think it was more like the audience reception helped us to sort of balance. I, I just want to say, I think Dan has given a very diplomatic answer. I think the real answer <laughs> is... We, well, I think the real answer is we still don't know if we've cracked it, to be honest. <laughs> just kind of gone on. <laughs> but, but if that, to be fair, if Danny says that, then probably his, um, his secret genius is coming out and I'm just thinking it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I've kept it a secret this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you already took the secret out of you, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so well, we're going to do something that, um, that I don't normally do, but because the EP's only got six songs on it, I'm going to run through each song individually and, and give my assessment of it and see what your th thoughts were on what I said. But before we do that, can, can you describe Broken Man to me musically and what you were going for with it? Uh, the entire EP? Yeah, the entire EP. Um, like I said, I think at first, like the early tracks uh, that we wrote, such as like Enemies uh, was, was one of the first, and, and Make Me a Martyr, it was more about less emotion and more just let's just get something out there that's just heavy and have fun with it. As we started writing the EP and realising that this is what it was going to be and realising that actually we do have all this sort of content of the last two years of not playing and being incredibly frustrated that it was going to turn out to be a bit more emotional that's where like songs like crooked lines started coming in and the actual track broken man um started coming in so i'd say what started happening is we, we started wanting to sort of write have an ep that sort of poured our frustrations of that two-year break into the EP and that was the idea behind it in the end of like let's just pour that frustration into this and have that two years as an EP basically. Wow. Um, I think we were both quite at the, I, th I think at the time um, I remember I was living in Manchester and Nathan came to visit and it was the first mm. time we'd not hung out in quite a while and you showed me these songs because I think we would always just like you know pick up the guitar in the corner of the room and just see what each other were doing and I think you put you played the first riff, or first couple of riffs of "Met Me a Martyr," and I was just like, "Yeah, yeah we kind of, we kind of have to make that, you know." <laughs> so, um, I think a lot of it felt just like we really felt like we needed to have that, like Nathan said, that sort of emotional output as well, of like, well, like, you know, we've had a rough couple of years. Let's let's try and make something of it. I guess. Oh. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to run through the, the EP now in chronological order, track by track. And like I said, I'll give you a brief synopsis of what I said on it and tell me tell me if I was right and your thoughts. So we'll start with the opener, Crooked Lines. Uh, we said, Crooked Lines sweeps majestically out of the gate, a mellow yet stirring intro passage featuring the smoky, silky smooth vocals of Nathan Morris over a gentle score that is anything but metal. It's actually quite intriguing until it snaps into an eclectic blaze of aggression. The drummer Thomas P.J. Johnson obviously not in the mood for pleasantries. <laughs> he rarely is in the mood for pleasantries. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think that was right. I think, um, I mean, it was, it was a strange track when, when writing because we had the, uh, I had the intro um for ages just just the opening basically and that was it i had that for like a year and i was just kind of sit, sitting on it not really knowing what to do and then eventually when when we started doing rothschild and we sort of realized oh you know we want to do we just kind of want to play fun songs and stuff that's when we started doing the heavier bits and we started mixing that intro to um you know to more more heavier parts so yeah, I'd say that was the case. I mean, that the idea was I was just on my own writing that intro to Crooked Lines and it was supposed to be like a nice, silky, smooth, um, I won't say ballad, but definitely, definitely <laughs> silky. And, um, and yeah, that was definitely the idea of, of them doing that. And then obviously when, when me and Danny got together, it was kind of like, oh, you know, we actually have to play this live or actually make it into a song. So then... You know, we just decided let's just go heavy with it and then get really stupid with it, which is what happens with. The yeah, song. I, I remember. <laughs> I remember with with crooked lines. That was the one. I think 
again talking about being self-indulgent with it but I think we were just in that rehearsal room just the two of us for I think most of a day trying to work out where we could take it and like some of the like the heavier riffs towards the end of it I think I think you came up with one of them on the spot and we were like oh all right then you know there's a lot of like just coming up with ideas and seeing if seeing if it fit on there and it's quite weird with the key changes and stuff but yeah I think it's one of the ones I'm more proud of as well to be sure. Oh. Okay, so Bloodstream takes a different tact again, firing up in an almost old-school rock vibe before the schizophrenic nature of Rothschild rises to the surface amid a wash of drums and sporadic guitars from Danny Jowett. There's at least five different songs competing against each other for supremacy on this track, and the blending of musical genres where they have no right to be is refreshingly captivating. Uh, yeah, I mean... Another weird track. I mean, lyrically, it's all about a, a uh, I guess, like a, the the full life cycle of a relationship. And I guess the idea was just to go try and go through that musically as well. So you mentioned like their, you know, the sporadic nature and everything sort of blending together. That was sort of the idea of it. So you are kind of spot on there. Is is just sort of obviously it goes from. Like you say, more of a straight, like a straight up rock song to them. It's quite, you know, radio friendly chorus where it's quite a major key, and then it turns into, and then there's a mid late section where it goes heavy with, with um, screaming, and then at the end, obviously, it goes into the more emo emotional stuff. So that was it musically and lyrically, it was supposed to, supposed to capture like the life cycle of a, of a of a relationship where it is all over the place. And, and that, and I think, yeah, I think pretty spot on there, to be honest. Yep, Danny's nodding. I'll, keep, I'll move on then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, Nathan, I think Nathan, Nathan's managed that. So. <laughs> but, yeah, enemies, enemies fires up with a guitar duel between Jowett and bass player Joshua Roberts. And with no sign of victory in either of their futures, Morris decides to step in and lead us down another rabbit hole. Yeah, I think enemies... Yeah. Um, was especially that guitar intro well the guitar and the bass i think that originally was was in was that the chorus originally i, I think we were going to have that intro throughout the song and i think i think when we played it live the first few times it was that mm. whole section was a, a much bigger part of the song it's quite a short song but um i think when we got into the pre-production stages we were just kind of like it works better if you just do it once that bit you know i think it, it, it's a bit more you know intriguing and then when you start when you get to that ending riff it sort of plays back on it and it merges together quite well and um, so yeah, yeah it's it it an was, interesting one to write yeah it was definitely the first i think it was the first rothschild track that we worked on and i'd say probably the yeah. hardest to nail down because it's it's more of a straight up rock song and to us uh, with our sort of music taste we get quite bored with straight up rock songs you know where it's your, your more generic structure which enemies has um and so it was the hardest song i'd say to sort of nail down structurally and musically because it's you know it i guess it's not as interesting it's not as all over the place as the other uh, the other tracks it comes across that way but it, i think it's because the energy has to carry it through so it's but it was, I think, a, a harder song to sort of get down, especially when we were in the production stage of it, because that energy had to really carry the track because it's not jumping all over the place like the rest of the tracks. So, uh, yeah, I'd say the energy has to carry that through. So I think on your review, you are actually kind of kind of right there. Oh, I like being right. This is good. <laughs> 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 all right, we'll move on to Make Me a Martyr. So I got... Make Me a Martyr arrives courtesy of a messy piece of feedback before setting off into another descent into darkness. But he re is rescued by Morris throwing a comforting vocal line over proceedings until he gets bored. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my favourite line from the review. <laughs> um, yeah, Danny, do you want to go for this? Because I think this is a collaborative one. Yeah, definitely. I think um, that opening and make me mad, like I said earlier, I think that's the first thing you, you played to me when we started you know, showing each other new, new stuff. And straight away, I was just like, I think that's, I think that riff, that whole, that whole starting section is quite indicative of the whole band, really, and the kind of vibe we were going for, like, you know, the weird sort of dissonance and, and stuff. And then obviously, like you say, mm -hmm. again, with the peaks and troughs of going into, you know, lighter things like that. Um, I think we were sort of trying to play with that contrast and keep bringing that sort of 
craziness back to it. Because um, the chorus, again, um, I guess similar to Enemies, is quite straightforward, isn't it? It's quite, um, it's less janky than, than the other stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think Nathan did get bored. So I think that's pretty <laughs> spot on, yeah. And you'll find a lot of the time I get bored and um, I'll just, yeah. I think, that, to be honest, though, I think that kind of sums up um, a lot of the tracks is is me and Danny got bored and then, <laughs> decided to do something and then did something stupid with it instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the writing process is us playing, it'll be us playing each other a section and then laughing, like laughing about it. Like, that's stupid. Let's put it in. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. that's kind of how it works. So uh, I, th- and I think there's a whole there's a different... whole there's a whole playoff that that happens every time we write a song where one of us will bring like a minute's worth of music to to the other person. And I remember the amount of times you had to go right, Danny. Yeah, that's well, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like that, yeah, that's I too mean, serious. But then yeah. I think we always try to just like you know find that that balance, like we were saying, of that. Yeah, and it was more in the production phase of things with, with our producer, Fed, who sort of wrangled and, well, I will not say he changed much, but he, he, he added little bits that would structure the whole thing better. So that was definitely the idea of it. And like I said, with Make Me a Matter, with that line of, of getting bored, that is kind of a lot of the writing process, to be honest. <laughs> okay, my empathy is getting weak. Sweeps to life with a... Slow up, more measured opening that sees Morris finding his happy place once more. No two songs on this EP have been even close in terms of direction, and it is a credit to Rothschild that what could often sound like the death knell for most bands, given their haphazard nature, is more of an asset in the hands of these talented individuals. Yeah. Um, I think that's the hardest part, isn't it? Is that is the is wrangling in everything that you've sort of come up with. I think some people are really good at it. Um and other, you know, people aren't. But the most difficult thing, I don't know if we've cracked it either. I'm very thankful for your very nice words. Um, but I think the hardest part, isn't it, is wrangling in all those ideas. Um, I was just saying it was the last It was the last piece to the whole thing. We were talking about cutting it out. Uh, we, we didn't end up doing it. Um, but, yeah, just, to, you know, I think I think that's the hardest thing is... is getting all those ideas together and, and hopefully it works. But that with that track, it was the last thing we did. And um, we just wanted like a little intro piece to Broken Man. And uh, hopefully it's okay. I think, Danny, do you sing on that, Danny? A little bit. I think I have one clean line on that, will you? So I'm just going to go oh. get the cat because she's interrupted. Second, sorry. <laughs> when, when she'll she'll just scream cat. at the door otherwise. I don't know. Um, there you go. Yeah, I think I think with that one we went through quite a few different versions of it because we wanted something to sort of break up the um, or add a little bit more tension. I think because you, you go through the EP, there's quite a lot of fast, you know, sort of energetic songs on there, and I think with like the intro of Crooked Lines and stuff like that, we wanted to have another moment on the EP that sort of reflected that contrast again. Um, and we, I, I think as well, like. I remember when you showed me the vocal melody that you'd written for that. I think I showed you the cards for the chorus of Broken Man. And when you showed me the vocal melody, I was like, that's too good to not sort of see if we can capitalise on how good that, that vocal melody is there. So I think we should start, let's try and do a little interlude. I think originally it had some some more sort of electronic drum parts and it was a little bit more ballady. And I think when we got into the production, we were like, right, we need to sort of, make it slightly less 80s sounding. I think it was quite... Oh, God, yeah, I remember. Sorry, I, know, I, was like, I remember like that. When... It had, like, all, yeah, yeah, it had loads of these, like, electronic drums, and, oh, God, it sounded... Yeah, I listened back to that. It sounded terrible. I'm glad we took that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely... We needed to strip that back quite a bit, because I think the, uh, our producer, Fed, was just... I think because we'd given the opportunity to sort of do some quieter stuff for us, um, he went a bit ham on it went a bit mad with all these different parts whereas usually there's no space to put much in is there <laughs> so I think I think he was quite tempted and we were like look Fed, it sounds lovely but I, I don't think it sounds like that child so let's, um, let's yeah. strip it back a bit cool. okay and with Broken Man I summed it all up by saying at times it is like almost sorry at times it is almost like each member is playing a different song such as the constant timing and tempo changes 
but then they somehow managed to bring everything back into oneness, albeit only briefly, to restore the status quo. Yeah, I yeah, think Rocket I mean, the I, track I'm most proud of. So go on, Danny. Sorry. No, I, I, I think you're pretty spot on with them, um, with that again, with the, with it coming all back together. I think around the chorus and stuff like that. There's a few moments in that song that it feels like, you know, everything sort of slots together. And the rest of it, I mean, that section just before or after the, is it after the first verse? Um, that was, that's probably the stupidest moment on the EP as well. So to have that on the lead single was, <laughs> was quite a risk as well. Um, there's a lot of like sort of interlocking parts that I guess are weirdly syncopated and then they all fit back together around the chorus and, and the ending and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think you're pretty spot on there. Um, it's spot on. Yeah, it's the way well, it's, it's the track I'm most proud of on the EP. It came the late. It, well, except for my empathy is getting weak, which is an interlude track. It came uh, as a full track. It, it was the last song to be written, and um, I'm just making sure my mic's still on. Um, <laughs> God, yeah, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's it's just one of those tracks where I don't know. It, you know, with, with every track on the EP, you can have these little grievances and stuff. When you write things, you, you always do, you know, you always do little things here and there and, and stuff. I, you know, in, in hindsight. But with Broken Man, it's still a track where I listen to it and just go like, this has everything that I wanted sort of Rothschild to be when we wrote, when we re recorded it. Because it's got like, it's got the emotion, it's got everything, it's just got, it's got, odd time signatures, odd stuff going on, but I feel like it's the most cohesive song to, to me. I don't know what other people feel, but to me, it sounds like the most cohesive song. Um, and so I just think it works. Yeah, it works the best. So I'm yeah, really proud of that one. So, uh, yeah. But uh, as long along with your uh, review, I, I do agree as well. I think <laughs> you've, you've uh, what is it, six for six? Seven for seven? Six, six for six, six. yeah. Normally one or two. I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys I'll, we'll finish up with this one because unfortunately i've got to get to my next interview but what's what's next for Rothschild? like it's been two years since that one was done so have anything new in the works uh we're gonna definitely get the next ep written much sooner than this one well i think again you know we have to deal with the lockdown and everything for that but um we've been sort of sending each other demos recently of sort of direction we want to take it in i think um potentially going to invest in a baritone guitar so something with some lower tunings experimenting with that i mean the sort of bands that we like um and that we're impressed by these days are doing interesting things with production as well so i think we wanted to look at more not not electronic elements like enter shikari use them but maybe you know adding some more layers in there and some more textures and just being a bit well i guess stay as experimental <laughs> Hopefully, we won't get too crazy. As we yeah, can, I think it's yeah. all about new stuff now. Yeah, yeah. I think we've got. I think we're planning to release a single in September. So that's mm -hmm. that's the idea. All right. Well, make sure you keep in contact and send me anything new through because I love what you guys are putting out. And it's well, a really pleasure meeting you guys, and we'll we'll talk more in the future. Oh, yeah, thank cheers, you. Yes, Travis. definitely. Thank you so much.
wash me or keep me I've been waiting for something